I'm Eric Jones, and this is my son, Colin Jones. I'm Colin Jones. We have Cinderella's Castle from Walt Disney World in Orlando. Uh, it's uh, just slightly larger than minifig scale. It's about three and a half feet by three and a half feet on the base, uh, over six feet tall at the top. It's got about 50,000 bricks in it, all told. And now this is an iconic structure. This is something that, uh, as we can tell by the crowds forming around it, a very popular, popular uh, landmark of a build, uh, landmark of a building. Uh, what inspired you specifically to want to build this? Well, the first thing that inspired me for it was Brick Fair itself. Uh, I came here for the first time two years ago and I saw all of the amazing creations that were here and I said, I, if I do something, I've got to make something at least as good as the wonderful things that I've seen here. Um, and then a couple months later, we went to Disney World and I looked at the castle and I said, that's it, that's what I'm going to build. Awesome. Now, uh, building something this large is always a challenge. Uh, how did you solve the problems of building big? What were those problems? Well, the first big problem was just designing it itself, which thank goodness for LEGO Digital Designer, uh, because I put the whole thing in there. Um, the second biggest problem was uh, structural integrity of the inside, because there's so much, so many different rooms and caverns and everything in there that trying to make the whole thing hang together took a number of different rebuilds to make it work. Um, the third biggest problem was just adapting LEGO bricks to some of the different scales here. The turrets themselves, the tall blue structures uh, around the uh, castle, those, those are really built to make something wide and not so much tall. And so I had to think very carefully about using offsets and trying to make those things so that they tapered up slowly and were as tall as they needed to be to be to scale. Definitely. It's kind of something that, like, Legos doesn't make a part that sort of suits that. You have to use different pieces to make uh, something happen. Very cool, very cool. Now, uh, can you point out some parts that you are particularly proud of that maybe you built yourself? Um... Well, I didn't build the mosaics myself, but I really like them. We are thinking about maybe taking them out and replacing them so it, with transparent flats so that they look more like stained glass. And yeah, I'm really also proud of the turrets, as my dad said. That's awesome, that's awesome. How was it collaborating with your dad on this build? Was it fun? Yeah, it was really fun. It, it took a while. It was challenging, but it's definitely worth it. That's awesome. Now, if there are any other kids out there that want to do something like this with their dad, uh, what would you say? What's a word of advice you would give them? Think big, think small, think how you want, and just do what your imagination tells you to. That's awesome. That's awesome. And to kind of uh, close us out here, uh, for pieces, uh, what was your single greatest source for parts? That's always fascinating to know. Oh, Bricklink. Bricklink. Yes, uh, absolutely. When when we designed it in Lego Digital Designer, it will export the list of pieces, and then you can upload it to Bricklink. And then it was just a matter of the months and months of finding the best sources possible, so that you didn't have ten thousand different orders. Uh, but thank goodness for Bricklink. There's no way I could have done it without that. Thank goodness for Bricklink. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.